Yeah, get naked, dude. <sighs> no. <laughs> Smurfs 2 video all over again. <laughs> okay, before we get into this movie, um, I am so glad we're here because as soon as we walked in here, we saw this movie at Parkway, by the way, and once we start describing this movie, you'll know why. Um, <laughs> so I'm standing at concessions because at this theater, you also buy your tickets at the concession stand. Because they just don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they started doing that. Their front desks are still up there, but they've been doing that for months. I, I think it's so they can keep minimal staff. Good point. <laughs> um, this, Yeah, this is the least... <laughs> I think this gets the least turnout out of all the theaters here. But um, anyway, I see their uh, medium-sized popcorn on display. And I'm honest, I, I honestly really wasn't that hungry. But I was, I saw it and was like, okay, maybe I'll eat about half of this or something throughout this 87-minute movie. But I have to get this because when else am I going to see... A popcorn bag like this. <laughs> now, <laughs> now tie-ins with television shows, movies, and whatnot. Not abnormal. I mean, this is next to a large popcorn tub that still has Valerian on it, but yes. <laughs> oh, how was your Monday night? Ah, oh, you know, the usual. Went to the theater to see another religious movie while eating my Unabomber popcorn. Mmm. Mmm. In the, in the bottom, there's a prize. It's a miniature oh, pipe bomb. Why do you think I didn't finish it? By the way, spoiler alert bag. <laughs> I had to make sure that I remembered to keep this. I am keeping this bag. Ooh, I can't wait for their Jonestown popcorn next. Ooh. It's gonna be so good. Why didn't they put Charles Manson on there when Aquarius came out? <laughs> so, we went to go see this movie called The Stray. Um, don't let the... Don't let the title of the poster fool you into thinking that this is very much of a dog movie. It's not. The strip. Oh, shit. Hmm? There's people watching now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so the stray is uh, seemingly made by one particular family, the Davis family, because that's 85% of the names on the poster for this movie end in Davis. And, okay, so the poster is a picture of it. I only found out about this movie, like, last week. When it's, I've never gotten a trailer for this. And so last week, when I'm like, okay, what's coming out this weekend? There's this movie, The Stray. And you just always know whenever it's going to be a faith-based movie. You can tell by the look of the material. You can tell by the look of the poster. I can tell by the... Honestly, partly due to the fact I never heard of this movie yeah. before it came to town. Um, we were the only ones in there, by the way. Uh, this movie is about a family... At first, well, okay, let me describe the opening scene of this movie first, because this movie... I can't lie to you. Alright, this movie is lame... But it is mesmerizingly lame. Yeah, it's 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 not good in any no. way. It is poorly written. It is terribly acted. It is poorly edited. Um, there are pretty much zero redeeming qualities about this movie. Uh, other than the fact that I got my Unabomber popcorn. Yeah, well. And I am... This is one of those, like, Saving Christmas and War Room and the identical, or I'm watching it, mesmerized by it, and so glad I was here watching this, especially in an empty fucking theater. But this was bad for very different reasons than some of those yes, other movies. Yes, because this movie's not offensive by any means. It is it's, it's, when you break it down. It's a harmless movie. It 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 is a subpar like family channel TV movie. But it has things about it that are just you can't believe how much they're fucking up and how they're making this yeah, movie. Yeah, like the opening scene of this is okay. First of all, the movie is starring Jimmy Olsen from Batman v Superman. And the kid from Heaven is for Real. They are... Who still doesn't know how to act, by the way. Oh, if you think a few years going by would turn this kid into a better actor, 
nope. I'm sorry, you lost that bet with whatever weird person you made that bet with. <laughs> So the movie starts out with the with Jimmy Olsen and a few kids and a dog hike, and the dog and the dog. Believe me, it's going to be easy to forget that the dog is even part of this. I movie. forgot the dog's name. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they're camping through like the Colorado wilderness, and already you were sitting there like noticing all of like. The things that would easily have, like, set them on fire or killed them or all... They're cooking with a camp stove inside the tent. (laughs) All right. And I understand that, in extreme cases, there are tents that you can do that in. Mm -hmm. A shitty, like, Eureka piece of crap plastic tent. Mm -hmm. It's a fire hazard. It's not safe. I'm nitpicking. I know it's nitpicking. But fuck, that's not safe. That is. It's so great because, again, this is the opening scene. This is taking place in 1991. So it's a period film. And then suddenly, we get a POV shot from a bolt of lightning ascending from the heavens. And it looks like it's striking their lantern inside of the tent. Don't worry. It goes back to this later. And then you get this outdoor shot where... I don't know if they all died or not. And then when I see the characters' names in the movie, I'm like, okay, well, they're not dead. Again, this is the first minute of the film. Family and dog struck by POV movie lightning. And then it flash and then it goes to one California year earlier. one year earlier. Like, ooh, I get to see a setup for the lightning <laughs> attack. They had to have noticed this movie was so lame that they put the lightning at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And when you look at the plot on IMDb, because really, I walked into this not knowing totally what this was going to be about, other than a dog, kinda. The IMDb profile says, a man is hiking in the woods with some kids and they're all struck by lightning. I'm like, is that the plot of the fucking movie? It kind of is. <laughs> so it it flashes back a year earlier Where the dad, Jimmy Olsen, is, he's working in Hollywood as, uh, he he reads spec scripts, he works for a a movie studio, and this is when I was figuring out, like, okay, this guy ain't gonna die, because the writer, he is the writer and director of this film, not that he's played by him, but that's who Jimmy Olsen is playing. Everyone in this movie is playing a real person. At the beginning of it, it says a true story. A real person that coincidentally worked on the movie. That also made this movie. And the dad is, again, he's working as as a... He he reads spec scripts, and he, he says whether or not he wants to approve them or not and as the movie goes on uh he he is no longer working for this studio and i'm sitting there like maybe that's a good thing if (laughs) this is what he does as a writer and director yeah (laughs) yeah weird little subplot about how he's unhappy working for a studio and they're putting out bad things yeah (laughs) um Right. Like the forced joke of like, I don't know, I just don't see Julia Roberts as a hooker. Yeah, that was forced in the fact that that scene was taking place after Pretty Woman came out. (laughs) So he gets a lot of shit, like from his son, who's the kid from Heaven is for Real, because he's always working and everything. So it's one of those movies. But the dad isn't, he never comes across like he's a dickhead, like he's selfish, or that like he just ignores his family or anything like that. It doesn't come across that way at all. It comes across like he is trying. It's just he he works a job that has a lot of hours, so he can't really be there every single time but he is trying it, it's not like he's it's not like it's liar liar or anything like that where you know in the past he cheated on his wife and they're divorced now or so like nothing like that really and now keep in mind we've barely mentioned the dog so far because the dog it only factors into this when the dog needs to a couple of things about this movie make it seem like 
certain things about it seem really manufactured to bring in a certain audience. One of those things is calling this a religious film. The other thing is calling it The Stray. Yeah, is and making making it seem like it's something like Homeward Bound when it's not. Or making it seem like it's an eight, it's stretched to 87 minutes when it could be just a section of a dog's purpose. Which honestly, you could maybe edit this down to 20 <laughs> minutes and serve it as that and put annoying Josh Gad voice on there. On second thought, maybe this movie wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> but even calling this movie a religious film, because in in the whole movie, there's a couple scenes where different characters pray or mention prayer. At, at no time do they mention who they're praying to, other than saying God. Yeah. Um. There, there's no preaching about it. There's no lessons about faith or Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple scenes of people praying. So not only is it inoffensive, I would barely say it counts as a Christian. Yeah. Film. Barely. Now I, I've seen religious movies that are certainly preachier than others and I've seen some where it's like the plot maybe isn't totally dependent on it but it, yeah. they certainly still come across like a faith based film uh, because of maybe some of the lessons they're learning or stuff like that um, this seems way more like a, a situation where well maybe if we put in like one or two scenes where they're like mentioning prayer or praying or something like that. Maybe if we do that, we can get away with calling this a faith-based movie and bring in the audience for those films. Don't know if it worked. Again, we were the only ones in there. Um, that's really what it came across as because when when the dad suddenly does start talking about about prayer, it's it's random. Yeah, it, it, it is really random. It isn't like like a message like. No, prayer's going to get you through. It's like, no, nah, it'll be okay. You pray for us, we'll pray for you. That way everyone will be fine. It's okay. And then it just moves on. Yeah. <laughs> Scenes that could easily yeah. be taken out of this film. There was one, and the, the part two where he goes on a monologue about Cat Stevens. Yeah. He's in the car going on this monologue about Cat Stevens and his near-death experience which brought him closer to God. He's interrupted in this story, by the way, before he gets to <laughs> like, yeah, Yusef he... Islam. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, you know, and if in the context of like a Christian or a faith-based movie, and they bring that in as a positive example, if they had gotten to the end of it, I would have fucking applauded them. Yeah, I, I would have honestly would have been like, "Fuck yeah, good yeah. for you, good mm. for you." Yeah. But no, they just stop the story. <laughs> Fucking stop it. stops it. the story. The kid literally interrupts him, and then he just doesn't go back to the story. <laughs> so, it, oh, by the way, okay, we got to get into when he's going up and going around and picking up children. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> we'll continue with the plot, and then we'll get to... So basically... This dog comes along, stops the bully from the kid. Keep forgetting about this dog. Exactly. In a movie called The Stray. Yeah. So they get this stray dog, and everyone in the family loves the dog. And eventually, this dad, who's working all the time, sitting around the house with like noise canceling headphones on, like misses the fact that their like one and a half year old child walks out the door and disappears for a half hour. Yeah. Neither parent pays attention that their kid's missing. Like, I'm a parent. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't realize your kid's missing when you're supposed to be watching your kid, you're a bad parent. <laughs> well, I think that is made clear several times yeah. throughout this film. Because this this movie is like watching the Buttercream Gang if every now and then Lassie showed up. Yeah. Like, not enough to call it a Lassie movie. Just every once in a while, Lassie makes an appearance. It's not a collie, but, like, you get my point. Like, the dog is, again, it's one of those things that almost seems sort of like it's pumped up or manufactured a little bit to sell this as a dog movie. And, yeah, the dog does, it's, it's, the dog is like religion in this movie. It's only there when it needs to be. Yeah. And other than that, it's, it is mostly a story about a dad trying to, bond with his son who's an utter shitbag 
Like his son is the kid from heaven is for real. And he's constantly giving his dad shit, giving him a hard time. Even after his dad has left his job at the studio, moved them to Colorado so they can all spend time together, which is what this kid's been complaining about to begin with. Even then, it's just this kid systematically giving him a harder and harder time to where you don't feel sorry for him because he's being a brat. Yeah. And also because his acting is fucking the horrible. so bad, yeah. Like, if, if with a better child actor, and that's saying a lot because there aren't many good child actors ever, <laughs> um, maybe it could have gotten across that maybe this kid, eh, he's a little shitbag, but he's got reason to be. But the fact of the matter is everyone in the movie is such a bad actor with the exception of the dad, who's not even that good of an actor. He's just so much better than everyone else. Yeah. That you immediately like him more uh -huh. than everyone else. He is like, he is likable in this. And I can't think of what else I may have seen him in other than Batman v Superman. But whenever there was maybe a problem with his delivery or some awkward stuff he was saying. You could immediately blame it on the script. Yes, you could. He didn't, like, never once did I ever think it was his fault. No, because you can tell in his face that he's trying. Yes. You know? Yeah. You can tell he's trying and he's making the most out of this utterly weird material yeah. that he's given. <laughs> like, I would like to see him in, in something that's a little better, because he, he seems like, at the very least, he'd probably be a compelling supporting actor in something. Um... So he wants to go on this camping trip through... To spend time with his boy. Yeah. And help him make friends in this new place that they live. And here's how he goes about finding friends for this kid. There's a montage where he's going up to people who he has just met and asking them if he can take them to the woods to take their son to the woods to go camping and they're like what and he's like to bond with my son my son's new here he needs to make new friends it comes across so awkward because he's going around town asking people if they can take their sons to the woods with him at, at least he has the decency to ask like do you want to go too first yeah. empty offer to these douchebag parents that are like yeah fine the take my dentist's child. office yeah he's in the dentist chair and he points at the son, the dentist's son, on the wall and goes, Is that your son? Can I take him camping? Appa you don't see the end of this conversation. So apparently this dentist said, Oh yeah, sure, this seems like a good idea. Why not? Seems like a nice guy. He knows Superman, so if something goes wrong. And then later on, when something does go wrong, that kid is like, um, and no, he says to that kid, he's like, sorry, I don't have your dad's phone number. So that leads me to believe that not only was this Dennis dad okay with just sending his son into the woods with this guy, who again, just met, but also sent him there without exchanging phone numbers. <laughs> what the fuck, 1991? Maybe that was normal back then. <laughs> yeah, it was a little looser around then. Yeah, I so, mean. So, so they go on this hiking trip. Shit. Where they get struck by lightning. Yeah, they do. Everyone in the tent gets struck by the lightning in this weird chain reaction thing. It hits the dog first. The lightning... Well, it hits him and the dog at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it hits him and the... Do They're playing it as if it was the dog that, that saved, saved them. them. Um, so the dog then comes in and saves them from struck by lightning. There's so many weird editing choices in here because the lightning comes in when he's tossing a packet of hot cho of chocolate mix and it's in slow motion. Yeah. And even some shots in the woods, you can t the audio sounds really tinny, which is a sound you get when you're trying to like take out wind sounds in the background and stuff like that or if he's just doing some ADR in a tin can that happens every now and then and when he gets struck by lightning suddenly we get these slow motion shots of waves of clouds and that's when it hit me because this poetic dialogue comes in this voiceover whispering and there was a shot earlier in the film when the daughter runs away and they, they find her with the dog and with some neighbors and everything. Suddenly then it goes into this sort of fisheye lens art film cinematography that has cuts in it 
when like the angle isn't drastically changing and between that the father son relationship and it getting all waxing poetry from showing the waves i was sitting there like is this director trying to make a re his own version of tree of life for the faith-based audience is that what this movie is the, he was trying to get overly poetic and he didn't do it to good effect but so <laughs> i would rather watch this than tree of life by the way yeah i'm oh. just throwing it out there <laughs> because this movie mesmerized me way more than any terrence malick movie ever has <laughs> so, so, so okay all the kids wake up. The dad who was struck directly by lightning, it seems like the kids just got, like, aftershocks. He can't move his arms or his legs. And the dog's just lying there fucking dead. The dog is dead. The, the corpse of the dog is in there. And this fucking movie takes this moment to throw in a shit joke. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking, yeah. <laughs> that is how little this movie cares about this dog. No. For this movie to be about, like, it's the stray and the dog saves them and brings their family no, no, together. No, the dog's dead. And before they even really acknowledge the fact that the dog's dead and has been lying there dead for several yes. minutes. Uh-huh. They make a poop joke. Yeah. The dad, paralyzed, by the way, goes, what's that? What's that smell? And the kids just go, <laughs> it was Clark. He just made poo mushrooms in his pants, out his butt. And I'm like, well, they're really broken up about the dog fucking dying, aren't they? <laughs> so, Shit joke. All right. So, so the dad, paralyzed, makes the kids promise, like, hey, tomorrow, if I can't walk, you have to leave my dead body here. Mm -hmm. So the next day they get up. Oh, you forgot the bear. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, please explain the bear. Oh, just when you think like, because for all intents and purposes, the title character of this movie is dead. Yeah. So you think like, all right, well, they're going to go home and bury the dog or something. No. So when the dad finishes talking about how, like, if I wake up in the morning and I'm dead, here's what you do. Suddenly it cuts to a bear walking up to the tent and the dad hears the bear outside and you're sitting next to me like, yeah, but you wish you didn't keep your food in the tent now, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, I swear to God, if the dead dog is on the other side of this tent and the bear walks off with it, once again, even in death, he saved us. Like, no, that doesn't happen, unfortunately, because that would have been amazing. No, the, the <laughs> there's a hole in the tent about like this from where the, the lightning came in. It. <laughs> so... Yes, they see the dad look up to the hole, and you just see this bear's eyeball just. <laughs> Again, this movie is mesmerizingly lame. <laughs> so he talks shit to the bear. The bear walks off. That's it. That's all it is. With oh, the bear. The dad goes, it's not intense. It's not interesting. He just talks a little shit to the bear. Yeah, the bear come in here, bear. I dare you. It's like, dude, you can't move your arms or your legs, and those three kids can't fight a fucking bear. They can't fight that bear. All right, so the next day, they pack up all of their gear. Man. All of the tent, sleeping bags, food. They pack it all up and start hiking down this fucking mountain. Mm -hmm. And in my brain, I'm like, you pack the food in the water, and you just fucking go. Yeah. So the, they decide they can't leave the dog, because the kids are going to cry. <laughs> So the dad, who can still barely move, asks them to carry some of his gear. And so for the next 10 minutes of this movie, he's walking down this hill, all half crippled and shit, with these kids, with a dead dog over his shoulders. And it's stiff as a goddamn board. And looks like the worst stuffed animal It ever looks made. like he won this for the children at the shittiest carnival. And they still make another poop joke. They make when, the, they when make, the dogs is dead over his shoulder. This is the funny. They make another poop joke, and this one kid walking up a hill with his backpack falls over. Yes. And, uh, 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 and so the dad with the dead dogs slung over his shoulders has to reach down and help this kid up. You just you have to see this. You have to see it to know how. Oh man! Misguided. All of this is like seriously. Like it. It is. <laughs> imagine like, if they tried to make a dramatic version of those sketches from *In Living Color* with Jamie Foxx and his dead German Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> That's this shit. Uh, 
Don't so, fail me now, Duke. So they get to the bottom of the hill. They get in the truck. They put the dog in the back. You were sitting there screaming the whole time. Go to the hospital. <laughs> Call 911. You've been struck by lightning. <laughs> no, yeah. Those three children have also been struck by lightning. So he drives to the nearest payphone. Walking up, I'm screaming, call 911. Mm -hmm. He calls one kid's dad and goes, hey, I'm bringing him home early. Everything's fine. We had some bad weather. Lightning got a little close for comfort. And calls his wife, tells her that the dog's dead. And then proceeds to just drive home and drop the kids off in their driveways. Uh -huh. No hospital, no 911. These kids were electrocuted, and he just <laughs> leaves them in their driveways with an, I'm sorry, he, and then goes home. He doesn't even talk to the parents either. No, <laughs> just drops them off. Oh, drops them off, goes home, hugs his wife, like, that, like, and then he's taking off his shirt, and he's got, like, lightning burns and shit across his body. Yeah. A third-degree burn on his chest, and he's just staring at himself, and I'm sitting there still thinking... Go to the hospital. You were struck by lightning. You were, like, paralyzed uh -huh. 12 hours ago. Yeah. You have a third-degree burn on your chest. Mm -hmm. You have burst blood vessels running through your body. <laughs> and your wife is poking your fucking burn. I like that Superman couldn't save this guy, but a dog did. <laughs> <laughs> from lightning. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And, and so they bury the dog and the other kids' dads come to help and they don't mention how shitty it was that their children got struck by lightning and even though he got them home safely, he didn't take them to a fucking hospital. The dad walks up. They, with the, one of the other kids' dad, as they're burying the dog, is like, so I guess it was a little more than just bad weather, huh? Here, let me help you. Grab <laughs> his shovel. And then there's a dog funeral. There's a dog funeral with a shitty farmer standing across the street who the only other time he was in this movie to say, if I catch your dog with my sheep, I'm killing him. I guess that happened across the street from their house. Otherwise, why are they burying it across from this farmer? The farmer who takes his hat off and puts it over his heart. I guess I like dogs now. And then dog funeral and then the end. This movie. Oh, well, <laughs> well, real quick though, again with the with the weird fucking editing in this goddamn film. Oh yes. When the it, oh we forgot about the 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 one year earlier and then one year later. Oh, we mentioned that when it said like a one year earlier after the opening scene where they got struck by lightning. Yeah, but we didn't mention how it said one year earlier after the opening scene. Yeah. And then five more minutes in the movie, it goes one year later. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And then another six months happens. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know it's still the same year, but come on, put like 18 months earlier. Yeah. Something like... <laughs> yeah, like it was getting just a little... sloppy filmmaking. <laughs> so much of this movie is. Like, that's just part of the many weird editing issues in this film. Because at the end of the movie, when there's this wide shot with <laughs> the family <laughs> and the other parents as... Colton Burpo and Jimmy Olsen are digging the hole for the dog. One by one, each of the other families keep leaving, which I guess when the first one leaves, I was sitting there like, did they just get bored or something? And they were like, yeah, I think he's going to be digging for a while. Let's, I don't know, like Dark Shadows is on or something. So, but then it, as they get to the edge of the screen, at the, yeah, they disappear. Like, they're walking and then just, like... The fade out. Fade out. They vanish. Which makes it look like they died on the way home. Like, this... It was, like, the dentist couple, who's the first time we've seen them in the movie. But, like... I, it's, it's, I was like, okay, I, I can maybe kind of put it together in my head. Like, it's get, supposed to symbolize maybe how long they've been digging the dog for. But the dad and the son digging's not changing. Like, and they're, they're not, like, digging the hole. They're just putting the dirt over the dog. Oh, yeah. that Like, that's not changing. That's, like, going in real time. And then the families keep breaking off and just uh, to, to vanishing. Like, they're just invisible. It's, it's the kind of thing that happens when, like, and then he later died, and then they vanished, or that person was in their head this entire time. <laughs> Why that edit? I mean, this is so weird. This movie is 
weird. <laughs> it's, it's just, I, I don't like. I just kept hoping, like halfway through, that it was going to turn into like the gray or something. Yeah, just no, get real fucking bizarre with that's it. That's the Idris Elba movie that's out right now. Yeah. Someone in the chat just goes, "They were raptured." <laughs> You know what? Maybe. <laughs> they went to the dog funeral and then they were worthy. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> which which also... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what a fucking horrible, weird fucking movie. It was, it, at least it was only 87 minutes long. You know what? Like, seriously. Like, it was... The perfect length for that level of just... <laughs> Like beautiful it awfulness. Was. It was. Because if it had been ten minutes longer, I'd have been like, "Dude, I'm done." And if <laughs> it, it still has another epilogue where he's now trying to write a, the main character is now settled in. He's going to write his own screenplay, and then it shows the computer, and it's the opening scene of this film, which is weird again because the poster and the ending credits say, "Based on a screenplay by another person." His, his one of his other sons. I guess that's like, not in the movie, so I guess wasn't born yet. Right. So uh, that's just confusing. So like this ending scene is suggesting that he got a great idea to rip off his kid's screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Based on an original screenplay by Gore Vidal. <laughs> this this movie is is most of these faith-based movies usually run the hard two hours. Yeah. You know, a lot of them do. This one, no. A sweet 87 minutes in and fucking out. I was enthralled <laughs> with what was going on in this fucking movie. So, if you're in... <laughs> if you're anywhere near a theater that's showing this film... Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I say if you can get... Like, I would... I, I've never suggested one of these Christian movies. Not even Saving Christmas. As a, like, go, yeah, we, we did. We kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as in, this is a train wreck. You must go see it. Yeah. This is a different kind of train wreck. You must go see it. Whereas, I highly suggest going to see this movie only if you can get the theater to just you and your friends and there's no one else in there. So you can scream at the screen like I did. <laughs> yeah. Also, go a little high. Yeah. Go a little high. Not real high. Just a little uh -huh. high. Go a little fucking high, because when this movie starts... It, oh, it starts fucking blasting giant yes. white screen of death. It hard starts, because yeah. there were no production logos in front, no. in front of this movie. Just it is just hard starts, white screen, white the stray. Yeah, it's the only like title screen I've seen that goes along with the marquee in there, which wasn't an actual marquee. They just had to print the title out on a piece of paper and tape it up on in front of the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, wow. Go like, see this movie. Like, seriously, don't let the... Uh, don't stay away from it because, you know, a dog dies in it. I get that, like, there's... I don't like sitting through that stuff either. I, 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 I don't. You will not have that problem in this film. This movie stays funny after the dogs no, die, really which I've never said about anything. No, but <laughs> because it's hilarious because the dog's dead and they just go, I think the dog's dead. Yeah. <laughs> and then they don't mention it again for like, like... He starts like the he gets the boys to go back to sleep, and then he starts talking to the dead dog's corpse that's laying right next to him, uh -huh. and he can't move. Yeah, <laughs> man. So he gets to spend the whole night thinking he's probably gonna die next to a dead dog. Mm -hmm. He was my best friend. <laughs> like, well, then maybe you should have focused this movie way more on the dog than fucking Colton Burpo. Yeah. Man, uh, yeah. They could only get the dog for two days of filming, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it, maybe. <laughs> this is the kind of movie where I kept half expecting the dog to change during it, which actually it kind of does because it ends in the ending credits. It's like actual footage of the real dog, and it's a completely different kind of dog. <laughs> Same coloration, though. Yeah. Mm hmm. Like it's like flashes back and it's an Italian greyhound. 
<laughs> it's a chihuahua. That would be amazing if it was a chihuahua. Yes. If lightning hit a chihuahua, it would fucking explode. <laughs> <laughs> Just bits of chihuahua all over the inside of that tent. God, this got graphic. Now I know why it's PG-13. I don't know if this... Because the fake marquee they printed out on there, they typed PG-13. I don't know if that's true. I think it's, it said PG on IMDb. Okay. All right. Uh, so, again, I... This is one of those where I'm like, I'm so glad we're here. I'm glad this came to town. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's always going to... Whatever you're going to speak is going to be mesmerizing when you start out the night with Unabomber popcorn. Um, Any other final thoughts about this? No. <laughs> Sarah and I are uh, going to see Battle of the Sexes tomorrow. I'm going to try to see Mountain Between Us. I think that's what it's called. Um, at some point during the week. So, uh, regardless, Sarah and I will be at Battle of the Sexes tomorrow. So, again, The Stray. <laughs> By all means, find a theater that's showing this. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for watching.